Welcome back to Morning Barbados. Still saying good morning to you indeed. Thank you for uh, joining us. And we continue now by talking about a uh, uh, business expo and health fair that's taking place under the auspices of the St. Michael Southeast Constituency Council. We have two of the members with us at this time. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome closer to me, Reverend Thelma Gil Barnett. Good and morning. we also good morning. And we also have Ms. Denise Tannis joining us. Good, good morning. morning. No, welcome. No, this is a big thing. Health and business, very important. Balance is always important in life so uh, let's talk about this first of all your constituency council how have things been going very very good mm -hmm. to date involved in a number of projects and actually the business expo and health fair is a collaborative effort between our council mm -hmm. and Reverend Thelma's Church Messengers of Christ very nice and that is what we are about in terms of working with the agencies in our constituency um, different stakeholders, making sure that we look after the needs of the constituents. You know, so it's a collaborative um, affair that we are very, very excited about. Okay. What is the response from the community uh, from the collaboration? Well, the response from the community so far is great because we started looking at, on our evangelistic programs, mm -hmm. looking at the needs of the elderly specifically. And the things that we found out was mainly that healthy lifestyle, health care, and some of the things that they were not really finding easy access to. Mm -hmm. So with that, we thought about having this health fair, inviting some of the, the disciplines to come out to the mm -hmm. community so that people will know who they are, where they can go, and so forth. And as we start to make our plans for somehow God intervene and connected the, what we call it, the church and the state together. Nice. So we felt that this is something that is so needful, especially in the area that we have our ministry. Because when we go there to evangelize, these are the complaints that we receive. And so we felt that once they know where they can go, who they can come to, although these things are there, they know about the polyclinics, but go to the people themselves. And they have a, a fear of getting out there, a fear of going. Mm -hmm. So we spoke together about these issues. and. We come across quite a few things together, yeah. and so we decided it would be good for the church and the state to look at these aspects that we can move on to help those unfortunate people. Okay. Oh, there's the, the health fair, which we could discuss a little bit more, but you're also mm -hmm. asking people in the community to, mm -hmm. if they have stuff that they would like to sell, mm -hmm. that yeah. they can come to us. So it's, it's also giving an avenue for people to, to, to make some sales, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. We realize that we need to encourage and to help develop develop sustainable livelihoods for people in the constituency and this was a major focus of the council so along with people bringing their displays and products for sale we're also having a business uh, micro enterprise expert a specialist coming in who's going to be doing on-site evaluation so she's going to be coming over talking to the people who have um, items on display and then we're going to be developing some programs coming out of that looking at some of the needs that have been identified on that day to develop workshops and other types of programs mm -hmm. for these people and also to engage the wider population of the constituency because as you realize it's on the Dash Valley playing field yeah. and this is an area where not much activity happens it, it's a it's a field that is known for sports but we want to expose people and engage people in a different manner and not have it just be associated with sports but looking at the business aspects of you know development in the community so that's something that we are very 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 we're targeting that area especially you development of small businesses okay you also said if if you have a service or a talent you know in the, terms of engaging our, our groups our cultural, well, the Pine and Wildy, St. Barn, no, sorry, not St. Barn, it was Pine and Wildy, Haggett Hall, mm -hmm. Dash Valley. There are lots of community groups that are in existence. Mm -hmm. And what we are saying is that if you, we, we know they spend a lot of time practicing, training, doing different activities. So if you have, if you have a cultural group or any type of entity that has a talent and you want to display, we are saying that the amount of, the volume of traffic that we are expecting on that day to come in, we are offering you an opportunity to come and yes. display your service, to come and tell people, engage people from throughout Barbados, because okay. we are not expecting only people to start from in our constituency, but from throughout Barbados, we are extending the invitation to the entire, to everyone in Barbados to stop by and see what we are doing and see what we are offering and come and see our cultural product, you know, it's a holistic mm -hmm. type of approach to business development. Reverend uh, Gilbarnett, tell me a bit about the health aspect of the fair. We've, we've kind of become spoiled now in Barbados, where mm -hmm. every health fair we can expect 
uh, blood sugar testing, cholesterol testing, but of course your ministry speaks directly to the elderly and their needs. Um, any specific aspects of the health fair that will speak directly to them? Of course, because as I said, many times we go out and they know about the polyclinics, but getting there is one of the things. So we are looking at the different areas that can help, especially those who are in their homes and cannot get out. And sometimes their families are there but don't have the time to take care of them. So what we are looking mainly is to draw a lot of awareness to not only to the disciplines themselves, but those who can help assist in finding avenues that can help these that needs, especially those diabetics who are staying in the homes. We've just lost a gentleman because of the lack of care. He was in the house, lost one leg, and the other seems to be getting, you know, worse. So he passed on because there was not enough support for him to get him to and fro to get attention. So these are the ways we're looking at the needs. We're looking at men who told us about the prostrates. We're talking about um, people who have cholesterol problems, they're looking at the type of foods that they don't have and can afford. And so we're trying to make it more accessible to them by shouting loud as we can that people who are there needs help, especially <coughs> the elderly. So as a follow-on to that, are you having discussions with mm -hmm. people who can provide the care, not just from uh, within the constituency council, within the community, but uh, 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 outside of the community, who can mm -hmm. Sometimes something as simple as provide a shuttle service once a week no. to have um, diabetics go to a podiatrist so they don't cut themselves, mm -hmm. uh, little things like that. Any conversations happening there? Well, yes. The person, the PR person who is dealing with that finds some little difficulties because everything is cost effective. Mm -hmm. And so even to get some of the cholesterol sticks and, and, and testing things costs a lot of money. And so these are the things that, you know, money is one of the areas of life that finds people have to leave off their real medical food things. What we're doing is looking not only, we're looking at alternatives as well. We have alternatives here, alternative mm -hmm. medicines. We're looking to see how best people can go back to some of the old ancient ways of using some of the herbs and the other medication that some of us grew up on mm -hmm. so that they could be able to help them in many ways. So. Um, I'm not speaking generally to any person more than those that we know for sure that was able to help into their own fields of work. Not only that, we find too that hurricane preparedness was one of the things that a lot of people find that when that happens, they're in the homes by themselves mm -hmm. and they're fearful of anything. They don't, right. They're not prepared, so we're trying to draw attention to all of that mm -hmm. to say that these things I heard this morning about caution. We heard about people saying it may never happen, but we don't know. So we are trying to insist that these people are well prepared before the time or the event may take place. So we're looking at that and not the, we, as we said, we pick these things up in our evangelistic programs. We're looking at community safety as well because there is a lot of activities that goes on there and vulnerable people are there. So we're trying to bring awareness so that these things will not go amiss. So any persons who want to participate or attend, uh, how can they contact? Who should they contact and how? They can call Mr. Tito Marshall at 271-8823 or contact me, Denise Stannis, at 243-8177. And this and is all. Go ahead. Sorry, there are available <laughs> spaces left, so we're inviting people from within our constituency to please call. It's a perfect opportunity to earn additional income. And to get some sort of advice also. Yes, yeah. yes, Definitely yes. Definitely that yes. should work out. So it's all happening this Saturday, June 25th, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Dash Valley Playing Field, which, as Ms. Tannis says, is known for the sporting events. But she's trying to turn that around and let you see how much more can happen in a space. And communities across Barbados have a special invitation to come out. It's a chance to network, a chance to relate.